All right, so over the past few weeks, I've been bouncing around some states, working on different projects. Right now, I'm in Adventura, Florida, just outside of Miami. It has been great to escape the cold, rainy weather of Philadelphia. And earlier last week, I was in Dallas, Texas. So while I had some downtime, I figured it'd be a good idea to swing by and visit Chief Wayne Baker, who is now with DJI. Now, as I mentioned in some previous interviews that I've done to kind of help you guys familiarize yourself with me and who I am, my name is Billy Kyle. I've been flying drones for six, seven years now, it seems like. I started out as a hobbyist. It was just something fun that I had picked up from Best Buy and kind of got into. My first drone was the DJI Phantom 4, and now it is my full-blown career. I literally travel around the country like I am right now to take aerial photos and aerial videos for the clients that I work with and also for myself, for YouTube, Instagram, and social media. So flying drones is like my absolute main thing. Now, as you guys might see, DJI is under some fire right now in terms of their country of origin. These are things that personally I don't like to talk about because I like flying the drones. I really don't do much work in the policy space. It's something that I'm just not really well versed on. And that's why I like to have people who are on this channel, right? So I like going out and interviewing, say, Adam Welsh from DJI. And that's why today it's going to be great to speak with Chief Wayne Baker because not only is he going and traveling around the country kind of like I am talking about drones and teaching people the benefits of implementing drone technology into their programs, but also he comes from a place of using drones every single day to help his community stay safe. So look, I do not want to make this intro any longer than it has to be. Wayne has some great stories to tell and I can't wait for you guys to listen through to this entire interview. So without further ado, let's sit down with Chief Wayne Baker. All right. So Wayne, where are we at today? This is the Johnson County Emergency Services District uh, for the area that I live in, which we're about 20 minutes south of Fort Worth. So um, in the county I live in, Johnson County, uh, town of Cleburne, and uh, the Emergency Service, Services District provides fire protection to the uh, unincorporated areas of the county, including uh, some incorporated cities that are a part of, including town that I was fire chief at just right up the road here, uh, Joshua. Sure. So you have some different buildings around here. This is where you guys practice, I yeah. guess, putting out fires, right? Yeah. Set fires to put them out. <laughs> uh, absolutely right. Yeah. In fact, uh, this is, uh, for me, where my career began as a firefighter. I, uh, I, I started out as a volunteer at a town just that way, a few miles. Uh, uh, city of Keene and first place I came to train was over here and uh, we uh, you know you do a lot of your training on the drill tower for everything from putting ladders up to uh, repelling search and rescue or rope rescue uh, to using that burn building and a lot of good days a lot of bad days in that burn day uh, burn <laughs> building bad days as a student and later on as an instructor a lot of fun uh, uh, you know uh, helping train firefighters um, that, uh, wow, I'm surprised some of them are chiefs now themselves. <laughs> sure. So now uh, take me to the time before working for DJI. Like, yeah. what were you doing, right? So you, you were a firefighter um, for how long? 25 years? 20, 26 years. 26. I, uh, I was a firefighter. Uh, firefighter, started out again, volunteer, worked my way up, worked uh, career for uh, a city called Alvarado, uh, worked there. Then I moved to a city called Cedar Hill uh, on the south side of Dallas. Uh, I was at Cedar Hill for about nine years. And as I tell people, um, my, my rank was engineer. I, I, I was a driver, I drove the fire trucks. Uh, and I tell people I had a, a respectable job driving a ladder truck. <laughs> and I sold my soul to the devil and became a fire chief overnight. And uh, Went to Joshua, uh, you know, it was a little closer to home uh, and, uh, you know, more more area I knew, people, firefighters I knew. And so I was fire chief there for 10 years to the day before I went to work at DJI. Sure. So, yeah. Awesome. Now, so like during your time as fire chief, just in the fire department in general, what sparked your interest with drones? I mean, like, like how do you go from being a firefighter to now, you know, I guess being an advocate for a drone company that, right. yeah. that can operate in the fire space? So I w I've always been a, a nerd, a geek. Um, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've uh, you know, um, I I've always looked for technology uh, that one I, I could have fun with as a hobby, uh, and then later on as a fire chief, 
um, you know, around the turn of the century, um, around two thousands, uh, what, what I was kind of known for in the area as an instructor was teaching firefighters how to, that would get lost or trapped, how to save themselves, rescue themselves out of a fire, how to rescue other firefighters out of a fire. Uh, but more importantly, we around, uh, turn of the century started saying, Hey, we need to teach ourselves how to not get trapped, how to not get in these situations. And we came up, or I say we, the, the fire service in the nation through the uh, Everyone Goes Home Foundation created 16 life-saving initiatives. And uh, one of those was to seek out technology that could enhance the safety of firefighters. So when I became the chief uh, of, of a fire department, especially one that had a line of duty death in its history, um, I, I, my goal, my intention, in fact, the first night I told them it would never happen under, under my watch. I, I never wanted to have a firefighter uh, die in the line of duty and we would do everything we could. It was my commitment that first uh, night to the firefighters to tell them when I met with them that, that we would keep safety at the forefront and do everything we could to prevent that. And so as a chief, one of those things was seeking out technology. and. To the point, I uh, I literally fought for an iPad when they first came <laughs> out. Um, you know, not a lot of people understood. The city manager was like, "We're going to look pretentious to our, our citizens," and uh, I I was convinced that there would be an app that would help me track firefighters on the fire ground uh, and and organize a fire uh, to where I, I could keep them safe. That. I was ahead of the technology. I got the iPad, there was no app. But <laughs> later on, that, that pursuit of technology comes about when in 2011, across the state of Texas, we had uh, some of the worst wildfires we'd, we'd had in 30 years. Where this links is that line of duty death was a, a guy named Larry Dale Stevens, who had died on Valentine's Day mm. in, uh, in 1984 because he was on a wildland fire. So here we are in this 30 or so year cycle um, where we're experiencing that. And again, my constant fear is my firefighters safety. And I knew there had to be drone technology was, was evolving or, or just coming about at that point. And I would look at the budgets though, $80,000 for a drone from, from Arlington Police Department uh, up the road who started out at about that time. Yeah. And, I, and there was absolutely no way, <laughs> my little bitty town, where we ain't but got but two nickels to rub together, we can't afford that. So we decide uh, we'll, we'll hold off. Luckily, a couple of years later, I, I and the police chief, this is about 2014, we are talking about you know, we really would like to get a drone. We were going to go in together to the city manager to to get funding, and we were looking at the the Phantom Two at the time. And I was fortunate enough that at the exact same time, someone in my community by the name of Garrett Brill had a drone. Shows up at the station one day and goes, "Hey, I want to help you guys out." And I said, "I want you to help us out." That's perfect. And uh, he starts flying for us. Next thing you know, Inspire One comes out a few months later, and I, I just told this story today uh, where we had a water rescue, and um, it was in the south end of the county, and we were down there, and I, I'm a water rescue tech, and we're having a hard time getting rope across this, what was now a river, it's normally nothing, uh, and Garrett sees that, sees the issue, and comes up with a way to deliver a rope with the drone on a water rescue with the phantom too with the at this point the inspire one okay and within just a within just a month of it coming out and him getting one well two weeks after he develops his system we end up on the far east part of the county on a water rescue again and it was one of those that i immediately was like i need a rope to that house and he flew it and that was the second time uh, that morning We'd use the drone, uh, one to f locate some people that were in the water, luckily had gotten themselves to safety, but now this one flies the rope across to that house, 
we had a new sh uh, stringer that was right there with us, had the whole thing live. DJI finds out about it, so does the FAA. And uh, <laughs> the next morning I get a phone call from the FAA, a few days later from DJI. Um, but uh, this was before Part 107 yeah. code was really a thing, so they were like, hey, uh, tell us about your program. And I'm like, oh, I got the civilian. They were like, oh, that's all we need to know. Uh, but we ended up working with DJI from then on. So. That's awesome. Now, was that like your aha moment when you saw a drone lift the rope? Was that like, that was like the time where you knew like, yeah, this technology is going to work? Yeah, absolutely. That was where I said, you know, uh, my, my thought, my vision, my hope was, was actually my expectations were exceeded. I went from selfish reasons, just having a better eye on an, a fire, a wildland fire at that. That was about as far as I'd really thought. We had thought some other police chief and I, other, I uh, had a few other ideas on what we could use drones on. But when that happened, it was like, this is so much more than what I even envisioned then and where it could go. And, and as a matter of fact, uh, one of my captains on scene uh, when we got done uh, and, and everything was finished uh, and we're packing up, he comes over and he goes, you have no idea what you guys just did. And, uh, and, and we really didn't. Mm -hmm. I, 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 you know, I, I go back to that day and I, I have to say that was the scariest day in my career. I, I stood on the edge of the water and I knew if I got in that boat and I ended up in the water, I, I was probably not going to survive. And, but still, you know, I, I had that duty to act and get in that boat. Uh, so my whole, my whole, uh, that whole event for me had nothing to do with the drone. It, it just happened to be that I needed it. I needed it then. And my focus was on getting to those people and making sure they were safe. Sure. So uh, it, it's just incredible to look back now and see where it came, where, where it went, how it evolved. Yeah, I mean, you think about now, like with drone technology, it's all about the camera, the payload, right? Thermal yeah. resolution, stuff like that. But you're even taking it a step further and using it to deliver stuff like payloads, right? Like Absolutely. A drone like the Inspire One's made for filming on professional movie sets, and you guys are rigging it up with a rope, which is awesome to see. Yeah, yeah. I mean, really, it's great. Now, um, what do you think, kind of being in the space now where you're not just looking at like fire, right? But, uh, you know, within the entire spectrum, what do you think is probably your, your I, I want to say favorite or, or maybe the best use case for drones in terms of public safety? Is it law enforcement? Is it fire? Is it search and rescue? Like, where do you see drones making the biggest impact? There, there's actually two um, that I have to talk about. Um, one is a little more brag about myself. Um, Romeo Dersher uh, invited me, uh, I believe it was around 2018, uh, to be on a panel of his uh in in san jose at a conference uh at the same time he also had uh fire chief uh their uh shuffle home from um uh, oh man sorry mom give me a second my mind went blank um palo alto uh the fire department there you oh, know man. better than I do. Oh, man, I know. <laughs> and they're going to be so mad. Don't air this part for sure. <laughs> I'll never live it down from them. Menlo Park fire. So, okay, there. Yeah. So It's been a long day. <laughs> you can fix that in post, right? <laughs> so um, Menlo Park fire chief and I, or, or, uh, Romeo Dershers invites myself, Menlo Park fire chief, to be on a panel of other people uh, in public safety and discuss where we see uh drones being used uh and 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 still this is very few fire departments using drones it's um uh, us it's menlo park and and a few police departments at the time so uh one of the things that romeo uh chief shepelholm and i discussed was imagine you dial 911 and a drone takes off from the roof of a fire station or a police station and flies to the scene and and the the information that that could give me as an incident commander before i even arrive can can reduce the amount of decision time resource response time um that could definitely save lives we, yeah. we could see it and what was great is five years later to the day last year uh i was at a drone on a drone responders panel with uh 
you know, FX from Parrot. Um, we had uh, Chris from ACSL, uh, Brink, and then um, Fritz from Skydio. And we were talking about how drone as a first responder is happening. So five years to the day from panel to panel, I am sitting there concept to it's happening. And I think that's, that is such a huge leap forward in public safety for the citizens that, that we all swore to protect. And, and the next is uh, the use of drones to fly inside rather than send sure. a SWAT team in, that de-escalation. So, you know, um, coming from the protests and the, the calls for law enforcement to, you know, change tactics, on a lot of a lot of ways to de-escalate violent incidents um and the brianna taylor incident you know uh law enforcement listened and they looked to ways they could change those tactics and one of those is not sending a team a tactical team in and uh, arlington police department and dallas police department have really taken that um dallas police department is just doing phenomenal work sending mini drones instead of you know mavic minis mini twos instead of sending the tactical team or avadas in um the, instead of the attack the tactical team and they're getting people to surrender to drones <laughs> no way. inside the house um without their needing to, to have anyone at gunpoint sure um, so it's all around. It saves it saves the the, the dangerous suspects' lives, t- in my opinion, as much as it does the officers. Yeah. And um, there's some other uh, really amazing wins that I've seen with that. I wish I could discuss a few more, but I'll just say on one of them, Dallas police, without a doubt, uh, prevented them being involved in an uh, a officer officer involved shooting and without a doubt saved the life of a young black male a murder suspect uh, but that doesn't mean you know that 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 he should die in an officer involved shooting yeah um, and so he was able to be apprehended safely even though the incident pointed everything to he had a weapon and could it could have used it on officers and it ended up not being a weapon and they wouldn't have known it had they not used a drone on that incident you bring up some of these different drones being used and i'm kind of jumping ahead a little bit here but yeah. the avada has kind of turned into like one of the best tactical drones that wasn't made to be a tactical drone right right uh it's funny i actually saw maybe maybe it's something that you were talking about uh you, you just had mentioned uh, on Instagram, it was from Dallas, Texas TV. It's like a, you know, just local uh, Instagram account. And they posted a SWAT team raiding a house and above, over their shoulders was a little Avada flying up and into the house. And they're like, Dallas police is using drones now, right? Which, I mean, you look at the Avada and how effective that can be inside of a home. First of all, it's pretty inexpensive, right? When yeah. it comes down to different gear that's used, but also just like the design of it, the camera quality, uh, you know, the image transmission, everything about it has kind of turned into a great little tactical drone. Absolutely. Now, I have to say before I say anything else, we we have been begging for an enterprise about yes. it. Yes, <laughs> and a lot of other people have. <laughs> we have been for years. Uh, going back to the, I was hired the week that the first Mini, the Mavic Mini came out. Um, and Romeo and I began the push internally then for an enterprise drone. I understand a lot of the reasoning why we can't commit to that right mm-hmm. now. Um, you know, it, it comes down to, do you want this drone to be able to work and work well, or do you want some, some issues maybe, um, that would have to be worked through because resources were committed to making an enterprise drone. Sure. So, you know, there's finite resources, um, and, and figuring out what's going to best serve our customers. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, but it goes back to the Inspire one. As you mentioned, Inspire One was made to go make really nice movies. Yep. <laughs> it was not made to deliver a, a life jacket to a victim in a water rescue. And yet we looked at it and said, how can this fit our, me- our needs? And, you know, almost off the shelf one turned it into, uh, you know, a, a enterprise tool. 
and and then now we do have enterprise products at DJI, um, but it's still some of our commercial off the shelf uh, products that they get taken by public safety or other industries and adapted to their needs. Yep, yeah, I, I see it often. Now, uh, you know, we've talked a lot about like early years, getting started with drones for you, what you did kind of before DJI. So now that you've made that move to working with DJI for DJI, what's your role, right? Like what's your title? What do you do for DJI? And, uh, and, and yeah, what, what have you been up to recently? So I started out doing business development, a lot of re relationship building with customers, with dealers, uh, helping marketing, um, but I was I was really fortunate last year to uh, be able to move over into a rebuilding, uh, as it were, of our public relations team in in North America and and really company wide. And uh, I was I was very fortunate to to uh, while I I really had a good boss as it were they never want to say they're my boss <laughs> uh, as it were uh, for 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 uh, my time up until last year but now uh, my boss now is uh, just phenomenal uh, she 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 and I have a great line of communication on things uh, like-minded on, on a lot of things and um, so now my role uh, director of stakeholder engagement which Sounds like a mouthful, but really it, it, it's, it's getting out there and uh, externally looking out, meeting with customers, meeting with everybody I did during my, uh, my time in business development, but hearing their needs, um, hearing their concerns, um, finding out more stories really more than anything about how they're able to take this technology and, and leverage it to save more lives. And then internally, I'm able to bring that information back in and, uh, you know, let our, our internal customers know those needs, but also that their work has value. Sure. That what they do is, is saving lives. And I'll tell a real quick story. I know I tell a lot and I talk a lot, but um, when I, one of the first things I had to do as a fire chief was buy a new fire engine. And that's uh, that's not a small deal. That's no. five hundred thousand, half a million dollar fire engine. And one of the things I wanted to do was go to the factory and make sure that the the the, the vehicle company we had chosen um, was now uh, capable of meeting our needs in their in their assembly process. And I don't just mean about how they can put it together, but you know their culture and all those other things. And so. Uh, we went to a factory visit and we're walking along the line going through how they assemble and we come to one guy and I'm like, so what is, you, what is your job? What do you do? And he's like, well, I just weld these, uh, this compartment area here and then it moves the line. So not really a whole lot. And I'm like, man, you need to understand my firefighters will only be on a third of the fires that this engine will go on. Your welds, meaning you, will be on every call that this fire engine will go on. So every life saved by your work, uh, you're, you're involved in. Whereas my firefighters may only be on a third of those. Sure. So to understand, you may think you have a small role, but your impact is so much larger. And that's one of the big things I like to bring back internally to, to our teams. Uh, and, and we have great teams but for them to, to understand their work has value. Sure. Um, now, we jumped a little bit ahead earlier talking about specific drones. Do you have a favorite DJI drone? I mean, like, you know, is, is there one that's your favorite? Like, I, for me, like, the Avada is really cool. Like, oh, yeah. I love flying the little thing. It's a ton of fun to fly. Mavic 3 Pro is my daily. Just takes great photos, videos. But, like, coming from a law enforcement side, fire side, search and rescue, like, what do you think is your... I still go back to the Inspire One. Really? I still, they were, they were so much fun to fly with that Inspire One, so much versatility um, with it. You know, we, we, we were so excited when the, when the XT came out and then mm -hmm. the XT2, but, um, you know, it had no collision avoidance. It had no, you know, uh, so many different things that we don't have now that you kind of take for granted. Uh, but you could just spin those props up and just 
yeet that down range sure. you know uh but then that versatility when when carrying capacity all that yeah. but, but now i would say yeah the avada <laughs> i think it's so much fun you just can't not have fun with it you know it's it's so it sounds like you're coming from a nostalgic place which is fine i mean t for me like the phantom four still holds a spot in my heart because i was like my very first drone yeah. i ever flew um but it sounds like something that was really uh you know important to you was like just, just how easy these drones are to fly oh yeah now, right Absolutely. i mean from coming, to the, coming from the days where you had to build these things, put them together yourself, you had kits to put them together, and now you just take it out of the box and it's a useful tool, it's really awesome. Um, so I guess kind of getting to the meat potatoes here, right, there's a lot of legislation swinging around about DJI being banned, right? And I think it's gonna hurt a lot of people here in the States and this could even overflow into other countries as well. So, I mean, on service level, like what are your thoughts? I mean, you work for DJI on one hand, right? But you're also, coming from a space of having used drones for, you know, over a dozen years within your yeah. own, within your own uh, time on the, on the job. Um, and also now you're just trying to, uh, while I think you're an advocate for DJI and you work for them, you're just an advocate for the drone space in general, right? So, I mean, Absolutely. on the surface level, like, what are you thinking about this? You know, first I'd say, um, I grew up in a military family. My father was 30 year Navy in the Cold War. Uh, that was not an easy time uh, at the height of the Cold War growing up. So I understood um, a lot more than my peers at my age uh, about politics, uh, about, um, you know, cultures. That was another thing, though, that was great about being a Navy brat. I grew up around so many different cultures, so I understood, you know, cultural differences and and misunderstandings that can come from that. And so, you know, on one end, a lot of the politics that involves, uh, you know, the anything anti, anything China is bad is as painful as an American to see because we're better than that as Americans. Um, you know, if we have an issue, if I have an issue with somebody, uh, you know, going back to my firefighter background, we would drill this into people in academy or even in their interviews. If I have a problem with someone, I go directly to them and I say, hey, here's my issue. Uh, and we work it out. And you will find nine times out of 10, if, if you work it out with that individual or that entity, you, it doesn't get higher, doesn't get built. So, so that's the first part that it's hard, hard for me to, to, to see. While I do though, as a military, uh, military brat, Navy brat. I do. I do understand where people's concerns can be. Um, again, I, you know, I'm Texan. You know, I, I we're, you know, I had friends over from the UK that uh, they learn a lot about Texas <laughs> yeah. and how we're Texans and then we're Americans <laughs> here in Texas. Um, you know, and and so I, working for DJI for me and and i looked at these issues even back you know as a fire chief because it security is drilled into us in public work you know we're we have to worry uh, especially when i got to the chief level about you know data security because i have patient information and i deal with the police department of criminal records and cases that they have to protect and then you have critical infrastructure that needs to be protected so i i understood that and work to mitigate any potential uh, issues. So now the other part to this is the lack of understanding of the tech technology exploited by people with understanding of the technology to, to what in my opinion has damaged the whole industry. Yep. All the strides we made from not over my backyard, don't fly that thing you're spying on me, uh, to acceptance by the community of a police department using a drone, not to George Orwell, not 1984, uh, uh, persecute them, but to enhance their quality of life and help protect them. Um, to see now this, this really, I just call it misinformation that's being spread out there about what the technology has done is is even more disappointing to see after so many of us have worked so hard to get the industry as a whole uh, and especially in public safety which has become the target uh, public safety to a point where this 
technology is, as you mentioned, easy to use, it's affordable, and, and it works when you need it to save the lives that we promise to protect. Um, and anything that hinders that without truly researching the issues that are being brought up, um, again, just totally disappointing. And, and, you know, how do we move forward with this uh, is the, the greatest challenge. And I just hope that we have, you know, people that take time to listen to the public safety community, the small businesses that will be affected by this. And I think at one point, um, one thing I, I point out is ultimately at the end of the day, nobody has given us a data security standard to follow. We've done it on our own and DJI has, has constantly evaluating data security, constantly uh, coming up with ways on our own to protect data using Amazon Web Servers, uh, local data mode, to even coming up with smart controllers that now there's no data put on it. Sure. To go into it, to go out of it. Um, unless now we're talking about pictures and video that satellites make passes every couple of seconds <laughs> yeah, to right. get that information. Uh, I just saw a, a, a video where a guy was talking about, um, okay, this app is stealing our data and sending it so oh wait no that's another app <laughs> uh so there's it, it's just so discouraging to see uh we would meet any data security standard that would be put easily because we're already meeting mm -hmm. data security standards nobody's mentioning um, we've been vetted uh, we've been scrutinized which is okay we welcome it but we've been scrutinized where no other no other drone company has been scrutinized mm -hmm. you know i look at um you know what you guys have just done for the drone industry and like i don't think there's a drone industry without dji i mean there's really no other company out there that's making a viable dock solution you know today dock 2 came out today as we're yeah. filming this yeah. video right a viable dock solution um nobody that makes a viable enterprise line that meets different people's needs nobody that makes drones that are fun to fly with right i mean think about my business and if I can't fly a DJI drone tomorrow, I don't know how I'm going to service my customers because I'll be using consumer tech that's two, three years old at this point, you know? So, um, you know, lo looking at that, as you had mentioned, like the United States government comes to DJI, let's say, with a problem. Say, hey, we think that you're collecting data. We think that you're sending it overseas. We think that you're, you're using this data in the wrong way. And you prove that you're not. And they go, well, we still think you are. So, you know, it's kind of taken exactly what you said and, you know. Yeah, it's yeah. It, it's thrown it right in the trash can. So um, now in terms of like the drone industry as a whole, as I mentioned, there's no drone industry without DJI. And that's just a fact. So let's say tomorrow DJI drones get banned and can't get sold or can't get sold, can't get used in the United States. I mean, what what's in it for the drone industry now? Like what is going to happen from there? I think that there's a huge stifling of innovation. I think that people who are currently saving lives are not going to be saving lives with their drone. People like like you said, small business like myself, I'm not gonna be able to use my drone, right? So I mean, what do you think happens if DJI drones just go by the wayside? Well, I can tell you, uh, you know, and, I, and I, I never was that fire chief that if you don't give me this funding, babies will die. Um, but I can tell you one immediate effect would be a serious hampering of years of progress towards life safety. Mm -hmm. And I don't just mean public safety as in police and fire. I mean, we can look at industries like uh, utilities where, you know, what I preach and teach about drones is send a robot, not a human, to, uh, you know, an environment that at height, inspections at height of, of solar, or uh, excuse me, of uh, uh, wind energy uh, producers of, power lines for your distribution, uh, critical infrastructure um, that might be more dangerous for someone to physically go in there. And I'm not saying it needs to be a DJI drone, but as you mentioned, is without, without competition, without that innovation, nothing drives the market. And, and so that stifling of that innovation, uh, putting us back, you know, some drone companies, not through any fault of their own or investors, um, 
you know, DJI had, a, had an opportunity to be ahead of, several years ahead of, of a lot of other companies. Um, so they're, they are trying to, to get to that point, and I applaud them, and I hope they can, can you know, uh, I, I, one company I talked about yesterday, I, I, I was actually talking to um, the head of their company, uh, another drone company, and saying, you know, I'm really glad to see you guys are doing this, and I look forward to seeing what you're doing next because that helps the whole market you know and, and so losing with nothing to fall back on right now losing a major part of the industry is not the answer and not the way um and and i don't and i don't think it's necessary and we've we've seen that when we have one state that says dji drones are so bad they must be banned immediately uh, but you know what? We're going to send them over to this country because they have an issue right now. Okay, why are they so dangerous that you can send them over to an ally? And the other was, following suit, other state legislatures said, we need to ban DJI drones. So in the next couple of years, you need to get rid of your DJI drones. Wait, I thought they were so dangerous that they needed to be got rid of now. So it's all disingenuous. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, if, if people would take the time to learn the facts and, and just talk to experts and the people that are the end users that are using them for their business, uh, I think they would, uh, calmer heads might prevail. Sure. You know, I, I think about a lot of the technology, a lot of the tools that are used on any job. And for me, I never look at what I'm using and think about the country of origin of whether it's my watch, whether it's my camera, whether it's the microphones I'm using, whether it's the lights that I'm using, right? It's just all these tools that help me get the job done. And I think that someone like yourself who's been in that position, you're never thinking about that, right? It's just more of like a propaganda tool that's sort of held up. Um, to me, right, I see you guys using drones and it's like American lives saving American lives. What Absolutely. was used doesn't matter, right? And, and you know, if, if there was a video, we had that incident happen today in Baltimore. Right. Oh, yeah. You see, right. Absolutely. So let, let's look at a situation like this where times of the essence, people have fallen from the bridge inside their cars are trapped underwater. In this scenario, you do not care the country of origin of absolutely anything involved in that situation. In fact, if an allied country wanted to help with a big situation like this or someone from outside of our borders, we would welcome that. Right. So nobody is standing there on the line looking at what you're using before you take off and saying, hey, that is a Chinese drone and you are not able to use that in order to look for people when really that's going to be the best tool for the job, right? That, that's how I look at it. It's like the best tool for the job doesn't matter about country of origin. No, absolutely right. I, uh, I, I would say exactly what you said. At, at that point, nobody cares. I, in fact, I would be angry if you had the, had the ability to use a tool that was taken away from the from you by the government that the freedom of choice the american way the capitalist market by our government was taken away to legislate safety from people that have have said in the past the government can't legislate safety and shouldn't but turn around now and say we need to protect you from things you don't know how to investigate on your own so I would be more upset that my family could have maybe been saved by technology that was taken away by the government because they listened to people and didn't research their own facts. Sure. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, now, you know, stepping away from like product based stuff, I see you guys are all over promoting just the advocacy of drones, right? Yes. Um, so I did a little bit of research on some interviews you'd done just to see, you know, what, what type of guy you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, I had seen that you guys are part of LIDA, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, LIDA, you guys are uh, always sponsoring a lot of conventions. You're always trying to push the drone industry forward, right? So it's kind of like, it's kind of like uh, you guys are a huge advocate for just the use of drones in general. Yeah. Um, so tell me a little bit about that, right? I mean, what are you guys doing uh, to kind of push the technology forwards aside from just like, hey, here's the stuff that we make. Absolutely, there's, there's a lot of great, and, and this is some of the challenge that we do have, um, is, you know, I, I went from being a fire chief with limited budget thinking I would go to DJI and we would just have budget to do all this stuff. And uh, the fact of the matter is, is you're always gonna have budget constraints no matter where you're at. But I wish we could support more organizations. We, we do support LIDA, Law Enforcement Drone Association, 
great group of, of guys that got together to, you know, really initially for their area to say, hey, we need to information share. And now they have really pushed beyond that and their, their information and their sharing is, is nationwide and international now. Um, there's IEDO in Europe that I love to help support and wish we could do more for, drone responders. Um, uh, Charles does great work and I wish we could do more to support them. Um, you know, there's Airborne Public Safety Association. That was the first uh, aircraft association I joined as a fire chief um, going back to that conference in San Jose with Romeo. Um, so, yes, our, our goal is not just to make the products, but to support the customers in learning how to use those products, leverage those products, inspire them to inspire. innovate, inspire, yeah, <laughs> uh, and inspire them to innovate like, like uh, their predecessors. And, it's, and it is so great now because, you know, I had this big name um, through no, nothing with me, but uh, apparently I, I learned after I retired and went to DJI that a lot of people had heard about me and the work we were doing at Joshua, and it was kind of humbling. Um, and now I go around and I meet people that are like, yeah, we're, we're doing drones for this. And it's, it's great to hear they're innovating and that they've i'm now just an og grandfather from back in the day it's like back in my day we used an inspire one yeah and you know and now they're the way they're leveraging them is just amazing yeah so i mean we're we're kind of at this pivotal moment here and it's funny because you look at dji kind of being uh, i would say attacked in a sense right dj's being being um gone after uh because you guys are at the top and you know you're, you're the lead you're the head dog in the drone space and you kind of look across the tech field look at apple apple is currently under scrutiny for yeah. being monopoly right um and you see everybody walks around with iphones they love their iphone they love what it can do and you know the the government looks at this as being a product that might be monopolistic when you know, it's just something that we all really enjoy because they make the best product. And I relate it to you guys. So, yeah. you know, I almost look at the at, at what's going on as not even being country of origin, but just going after a really successful figure headed in industry and trying to break them up. Um, and it's kind of happening in different ways. So, you know, I've seen videos of people wanting to take a stand for the iPhone and for Apple. So if people want to take a stand for DJI, for the drones they use every single day, whether they're a police chief, whether a fire chief, uh, whether they run a search and rescue operation, whether you're someone like myself that, you know, is a photographer and videographer, like what, what's something that I could do to kind of help people that run the legislation in my state know that these are products that I want to continue to be able to use? Um, you know, the first step starts with uh, getting to their, their own legislators if they, you know, in their, in their state, their state legislators, um, you know, there's a lot of people that, that don't realize that they do have that access to their local legislators, their, their state, uh, as well as getting to getting the message to their U.S. Congress representatives, senators and Congress um, elected officials. So that's one way, you know, let their own voice be heard. Let them know. This is why the technology and the freedom of choice is valuable. And, and you know, um, letting them know that, you know, we don't combat the evils of the world by becoming the evils of the world. So uh, the, the other is to uh, get with organizations. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to name drop Vic Moss. And uh, getting with Vic, Namo Vic Moss, uh, he's, he's done a lot of advocacy because he has a vested interest with his own business. Uh, and and uh, he's part of the Drone Advocacy Alliance and getting with the Drone Advocacy Alliance and helping be a part of that to have a now a unified voice with other like-minded individuals, other small businesses to now you know not only are you voicing but now that megaphone is voicing hey look we we want to have that freedom of choice to use these products until we feel like in a capitalist market we feel like that product isn't suiting our needs we like this product and going back to your iphone 
I started out, I was a Motorola and, and Android phone user. Yep. Until the Android phone stopped text messaging people or, or I didn't get phone calls from people. And I started having other issues with my Android based app. And I was one of those who was, I ain't having an iPhone. I ain't gonna, <laughs> I ain't gonna be bougie with an iPhone, right? And uh, you know what? I finally, I broke down and I got an iPhone. And man, there's so many things that, while I still have a PC at home and there's, you know, I can't play the, the, the games I play. I can't play Days Gone or... You're or, a gamer? Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> I, I, I have my Steam account on my PC and my Steam Deck. And then I have my Mac. Granted, it's my work Mac, but I have my Mac when I'm doing, like, my video editing or other yeah. things. And so um, the apps on my iPhone are just so much more uh, valuable to me than the the android apps now my kids they wanted android apps they had that freedom of choice to go pick android phones mm -hmm. you know that freedom of choice will let the market decide if i don't want to get this because of these concerns i'm going to get this yep and and i think that's again goes back to the disappointing part of being an american being a texan and seeing us regulate all at the sake of complaining about other regulators mm -hmm. so well i think that's about all i got for you you have any questions for me oh i got tons <laughs> give me what you give me the best one so uh what got you into drones you know what's funny is my lacrosse coach bought a drone and we all made fun of him uh -huh. he'd bring it to practice fly it around and take videos of us as we were playing like just for film's sake so we would try to hit it out of the air right we'd throw the crossbows uh -huh. at it but low key, I was like, that's pretty cool. So graduated high school, bought my first drone, made a YouTube video about it, got like 300 views. I was like, all right, I got something here. And the rest is history. So. Oh man, that's <laughs> great. So now you're, you know, you've got a successful YouTube. Do you have other medias, Instagram accounts that are as successful? Or? Yeah, I mean, my, my general thing is just having fun with drones, trying to capture as much as I can with drones. You know, I mean, I love using cameras, as you can see, we got three of them yeah, all around yeah. here, right? But like, just there's something about a drone's perspective that is just so awesome. So Instagram's another spot that I love to fly and or yeah. uh, post all my drone footage, so. And then uh, you got a lot of great trick shots. Uh, I, I, I love seeing like uh, over to the Trinity River, uh, uh, you know, where you got the Reunion Tower yeah. uh, here a while back. Uh, I'm trying to remember, I think that was around the summertime. How did you stand the smell of the Trinity down that you know, I, you know, that's the thing is with the drone, I could be a little further away, so I didn't have to, I didn't <laughs> yeah. have to smell the Trinity. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I love that area, but uh, you definitely know when you're coming into Dallas from the south side. Yeah. Uh, you go over that Trinity, and uh, they believe it or not, they wanted to make at one time a San Antonio Riverwalk type thing down really? there. <laughs> so. I'll make sure to roll my windows up when I head back over. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Wayne, thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah.